I didn't start there. Okay, there it is. I have no pockets. Well, this here is a story about Jack. Now, I know you've all heard at least one story about Jack. Remember Jack and the beanstalk and the big giant? Well, this here is a story about Jack when he was a lot older. Now, Jack went into the military and he served the king and he served him for 20 years. Now, after 20 years, if you get out of the military, we have a pension plan. But uh, back in those days, they didn't have no pensions. All they do is give you a couple loaves of bread and send you on down the road. Well, that was Jack. So he took a loaf of bread, put under one arm, and a loaf of bread put under the other arm. He starts on down the road. Well, about a mile or two down the road, he meets up with an old woman, and she looks mighty hungry and mighty poor. So Jack takes one of the loaves of bread and gives it to her. She's mighty thankful, and she thanks Jack kindly. He goes on down the road. Well, he gets down the road another mile or two, and he sees an old man. Now the old man looks just as hungry and just as poor as that old lady did. So Jack, he takes the other loaf of bread, breaks it in half, gives the old man half a loaf of bread, puts the other half back under his arm, starts down the road. Well, he didn't get very far when he got to thinking about what he'd just done. And he turned around and he went back. He said to the old man, he says, old man, he says, I didn't treat you fair and square. I gave that old lady a whole loaf of bread, and I only gave you a half. So here's the other half. He handed it to the old man. The old man looked up at him and smiled and said, Why, thank you, Jack. That's mighty kind of you. Well, Jack was a little surprised because he hadn't mentioned his name and how he knew who he was. But uh, the old man said to Jack, He says, Jack, now I got something for you. And Jack thought that was a little strange. The old man picked up a sack and handed it to Jack. He says, now this here is a magic sack. He says, if you want to catch something, all you do is open up this sack, lay it over the back of your arm, open it up, pat the back of the sack, say, wickety whack, into my sack. And whatever it is, it'll jump right in that sack. You just tie it off, throw it over your shoulder, and you got it. Well, <laughs> Jack didn't believe the old man, of course, but he thought he'd humor him, and he took the sack and thanked the old man kindly and started off down the road. The old man said, Ah, oh, no, wait a second, Jack. He says, I got another gift for you. Jack says, What's that? I got this glass vial. He says, Now, this is a magic vial. He says, If someone's sick and you want to know whether they're going to live or die, you pour the a little fresh spring water into this vial and you look through that vial full of fresh spring water and if old man death is standing at the foot of the bed well that person's going to live but if old man death stand at the head of the bed that's the end of the story well jack took the vial put it in his pocket threw the sack over his shoulder started off down the road well, about late afternoon, he was going through a little copse of trees and he heard a noise up above his head. It went, gobble, 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 gobble. Jack looked up, saw a couple of big old tom turkeys. Ha <laughs> ha. He says, boy, I'd sure like to catch those two. And then he thought about the sack. He looked around. There wasn't nobody to see him making a fool of himself. So he decided he'd give it a try took the sack, opened it up, laid it over his arm, patted the back of the sack, looked up at the turkeys, said, wickety-whack, into my sack. Those turkeys flew right down, got in that sack. Jack tied it off, threw it over his shoulder, started off down the road. Well, along about evening, he came to an inn, and there was a, it was getting dark, and there was a light on in there. So he opened the door, looked inside, there were some folks in there playing cards. So Jack walked in, walked over to the counter there and, and saw the innkeeper. He says to the innkeeper, he says, well, he says, you know, I'd like to have a place to sleep tonight and a meal. He says, now I ain't getting any money, but I've got something you might be interested in. Jack took the old sack down. He wasn't sure those turkeys were still in there, but he opened it up, 
showed it to the innkeeper. Innkeeper looks inside, sees two great big old Tom turkeys. He said, well, sure, I'd be mighty happy to take those off your hands and give you a supper and a place to sleep and even give you a breakfast. Well, that suited Jack just fine. So Jack had his fine supper, sat down, played cards with folks, went to bed, got up the next morning, had a fine breakfast. The innkeeper even gave him a few coins to jingle in his pocket. Jack threw the sack over his shoulder, went on down the road. Well, he walked the whole day through. Come evening time, he was just coming over the top of the hill and he sees a village down below. But as he's going over the top of the hill, he looks off to the right and he sees a big old mansion. Now, this mansion didn't look like it was lived in. The curtains was all askew and there was weeds in the yard. Jack made a mental note of that and headed straight on down into the village. Well, halfway through the village, he saw another house, very much like the one up on the hill. And he thought, well, that's more than just a coincidence. So he walked up, knocked on the door, and an old man answered. And Jack says, you know, he says, as I was coming over that far hill up there, I saw this mansion, but it didn't look like nobody lived in it. The old man kind of laughed and said, well, <laughs> he says, you know, I had, uh, that was my first house, and uh, I, uh, tried to sell it, but he says, you know, it's got a haint. Jack says, a haint? Yeah, it's got spooks in it. Jack says, oh, you mean it's haunted? I says, that's it. And uh, the old man says, well, he says, you know, he says, I, I even tried to give it away. I couldn't sell it. He says, I tried to give it away with 500 acres of land. He says, got a couple people that uh, decided they might uh, try and stay overnight it was all I was asking, just stay over one night and I'll sign it over to you. But uh, next morning, I uh, went up there and one of them was dead. The next fellow that tried it, he went out in the middle of the night. He was screaming white and never saw him again. Jack thought a minute and said, uh, is that offer still open? The old man says, well, I suppose it is. Jack says, I'd like to try that. So. The old man went back inside, filled a little sack full of some food, and they went back up on the hill. He got Jack settled in. Jack built him a little fire. He's cooking a pone of corn for his supper. The old man wished him well. Says, I uh, hope you're still here in the morning. Jack says, I will be. So the old man left him. And after supper, Jack was sitting down and he was playing cards with himself. He threw the sack off in the corner, dealing out, playing solitaire. About midnight, there was a terrible clatter up on the landing. Now, Jack didn't want to look up. He didn't want to let anybody know he knew he'd heard it. So he peeks out of the corner of his eye, and there's three little ghosts up there, three little goblins, and they're mean looking. And they come up flip-flopping down the stairs. And they got big old swords, and they're waving them at Jack, and Jack's just got his head down, and he's kind of watching them out of the corner of his eye, and he's dealing the cards. It kind of throws them. They didn't scare Jack. So finally they got to look and see what Jack was doing. And they thought, well, they'd like to play cards too. So they kind of pointed at the cards and pointed at Jack and pointed at themselves. Jack looked up and says, oh, he says, you'd like to play cards. Well, he says, I can teach you how to do that. Uh, we stoked the fire a bit here. Jack says, well, I'll teach you. He says, you got any money? And the little devils looked at each other. Jack says, well, it's a gambling game. You got to have something to bet. They reached in their belts and they pulled out a little sack and showed Jack some gold coins. Jack says, that'll do, sit down. So Jack played it kind of conservative at first. And pretty soon he was winning and he won all their gold. And Jack looked at the little devils and he said, well, he says, if you ain't got nothing more, I guess the game's over. Well, they was just mad, hopping mad. They picked up their big old swords and they waved them at Jack. Jack reaches over, picks up the sack out of the corner, opens it up, lays it over the back of his arm, opens it, says, wiggity whack, into my sack. And those three little devils jumped right in that sack. Jack tied it off, wrapped it up, throwed it back in the corner, went to bed. <laughs>
Well, the next morning, the old man came up and expecting to find Jack either dead or not there. Here's Jack cooking himself a nice breakfast over the fire. The old man told the old man the story about uh, the three little devils. And uh, the old man was as good as his word. He signed over the deed to the house and to 500 acres of land to Jack. Well, they then took the sack and went on down into town. And they t gave the sack to the blacksmith. The blacksmith laid it on his anvil and he hammered on that sack for a half an hour. Sparks just flew. And then when they opened the sack up, shook it, nothing but ashes came out. So Jack took the sack, went back up on the hill, became a gentleman farmer. He hired some boys from the town to come out and work the land for him. And he just kind of sat there in his rocking chair and directed the whole operation. Well, one day, the boys would bring out a paper to him every morning, and one day, he looked at the headline of the paper and said, King's daughter, ill. Well, Jack said, that's too bad. Maybe I can help. He thought about that little glass vial. He stuck the little glass vial in his pocket, threw the sack over his shoulder, went off to the king's palace. Well, he told the major domo there that he'd like to see the daughter and see if he could help out. Well, the major domo was a little skeptical. He said, you know, he says, the last fellow that came was a real doctor. He says, he didn't do him any good. You know, the king had him hung. Well, that didn't sound too good. But Jack says, well, he says, I think I can help. I'd like to try anyway. So they showed him into the daughter's room. Sure enough, she's laying there in bed, just looking pale as can be, not moving at all. Jack says, well, he says, I've got a, uh, I've got a little magic I can work here. He says, uh, what I need is some fresh spring water and then to have you stand just outside the door till I'm done, because I don't need to have people see what I'm doing here. Now, well, Major Domo was a little, little leery, but he thought, well, we can hear what's going on, so we'll give it a try. So they brought him some fresh spring water, and then they closed the door. Jack took the little vial out of his pocket, poured the spring water in, held it up to the bed. Sure enough, old man Death was standing at the head of the bed. Well, you know what that means. So Jack, while he was holding the little vial up, took that sack, shook it open, laid it over the back of his arm, patted the sack and said, wickety whack, into my sack. Old man death just jumped right into that sack. Well, Jack tied it off, threw it over his shoulder, called the major domo in, says, well, he says, if you have a look, I think she's starting to gain some color. He looked down and sure enough, her cheeks were starting to rose up a bit and she started to move. Well, the king was just happy as could be and wanted to reward Jack. He was going to give him his weight in gold, Jack said. Well, he says, you know, I've got everything I need. I've got a nice little farm up there on the hill, and, and I don't need any more than that. I'm just happy to be of help, happy to be of service. So Jack went on home. Jack lived there for many, many years. The, in fact, the boys he had hired, they grew up went away, he hired some more boys to come out and help. They grew up, went away, he hired some more boys to come out and help. Now when Jack had come home with that sack, he had handed it to one of those boys and he said, you go out in that great big elm tree out in the yard and you tie this sack up there real tight so that it doesn't fall down. The boy had done that. So after all these years, Jack had forgotten about the sack, forgotten about all of that. One day he decided, well, he hadn't been in town for some time. I'd like to go in and talk to some of his neighbors. So he starts out for town. He starts down the hill, and as he's starting down the hill, there's an old lady kind of trudging up the hill. She's kind of bent over, almost double. Jack looked down and says, fine morning, isn't it, ma'am? The old lady just kind of bent, turned up, looked at Jack. Jack looked down into those eyes, just eye sockets that looked like pee holes in the snow. And the lady says, no morning's a fine morning when you're as old as I am. Jack says, well, how old are you, ma'am? 
Next month I'll be 156. 156? That's mighty old. To what do you attribute your longevity? The old lady looked up at him and says, Why ain't you heard? There's some fool got death tied up in a sack. Ain't nobody died around here in 60 years. Well, Jack didn't go to town. Jack went back home. Sat in his rocking chair and rocked back and forth the rest of the afternoon and into the evening. And all through the night, rocking back and forth, just thinking. Next morning, the boys came out. Jack handed his Barlow knife to one of the boys and says, you take this knife, you go up in that elm tree out there in the yard. There's a sack up there you'll find, tied. Cut the cords and bring that sack to me. Well, the boy did what he said. Came down, handed Jack the sack. Jack set the sack down in front of him, looked at it, rocked back and forth all afternoon, starting to get dusk. Jack finally had made a decision. He reached down and he opened up that sack. Old man Death leaped out and folks for miles around started dying and falling over. But don't you know, the very first one that Old Man Death got was Jack himself. And that's the story of Jack and Old Man Death.